Sweet home, Santa Barbara, where the skies are so blue. Sweet home, Santa Barbara, what's worked for me can work for you. Welcome back, friends, to Sweet Home Santa Barbara. I'm your co-host, Jonathan Robinson, and I'm with my trusty co-host, friend, and realtor. Scott Williams. Hey, partner. <laughs> nice hat, Scott. So, you know, we're, we're starting this uh, series of 12 different uh, areas of the Santa Barbara area to give us a historical viewpoint of where we live and what came to be Santa Barbara today. And today we're going to be focusing on the San Marcos Pass area. And I hear you know quite a lot about it. Uh, what can you tell us about the San Marcos Pass, Santa Ynez area? Well, we call them neighborhoods, Jonathan, the neighborhoods. Well, San Marcos Pass is, you know, I'm I'm dressed like a cowboy. For those of you who are just listening to the podcast, I have my my cowboy hat on today. Because uh, crossing the Santa Ynez Mountains to get to Santa Barbara, that's how you used to get here if you didn't come by boat. And it was quite a trek going over the top of San Marcos, Marcos Pass, about 2,225 feet. And uh, the, the San Marcos is actually named after one of the friars from the mission who helped really build some of the you know, integral parts of the mission. He was, uh, Marcos was his first name, Marcos Amistoy. And so San Marcos, named after him, that was the 1804 to 1813 time frame. So quite a ways back in time. And it that pretty much came to our attention when, before we were a state, 1846, Colonel Fremont um, was engaging the, we were owned by Mexico in those days. And he came over the pass in 1846 to let the Mexicans know that the Americans were interested in taking over this territory. There was actually a war, if you recall, the Mexican War, we called it the War with Mexico. But 1846, he camped at the top of the pass and then came over what, what we now call Old San Marcos Pass Road. He came down, it was just an Indian trail in those days, down into Santa Barbara. So uh, I heard that San Marcos was a big stagecoach stop back in the early days. and. Uh... I'm wondering what you know about that. Yeah, stagecoaches were, you know, you could you could you either walked or you rode a horse, and eventually they built a road. Uh, now the building of the roads over the over the pass, a couple of different things happened there. First of all, some some gentlemen who were down in, in town, mostly a group of like six doctors and six lawyers, entrepreneuring, decided they would build a turnpike road or a toll road basically down from San Marcos High School on one end up to Maddie's Tavern up in the valley on the other end. Maddie's Tavern was the end of where the railroad, it was a narrow gauge railroad, ended. But if you wanted to get to Santa Barbara, then you had to take what amounted to a, a stagecoach over the rest of the uh, rest of the way. Uh, they came in in the 1860s to build this uh, road. Uh, eventually, by 1890, 30 years later, the county took it over and it turned into a free road. But it, it, back in the day, um, they had places along that road up, which is now underneath San Mark, uh, excuse me, Lake Kachuma. Mm -hmm. There was the stagecoach, the central stagecoach was up there. And then they had one up in the top of the pass. A couple of names that we still associate with the pass, the Ogram family and the Kenevan family were part of the, those old stagecoach days. And... Um, they, they hired Chinese laborers, coolies, as we call them in those days, and pick and shovel and black powder, and they blasted a, a road through the mountains. Thank God they did it uh, back then so we don't have to do it today. <laughs> well, nowadays there's a cold, bridge, or cold Springs Bridge um, you know, that goes over that big ravine. How did people get across that chasm way back in the day? Well, the, I think that's the San Jose Creek which is down on the bottom there. And there was still a bridge back in those days, although there was quite a switchback going down to the bridge. And you had to, to go across that bridge. It was even worse if you wanted to go all the way to the bottom of the canyon and back. If you were on a horse, they charged you a dollar to get across the bridge. And stagecoaches were $2.50. Because those switchbacks were so 
um, you know, they're tight, even a car. But for a stagecoach, which is six horses in a Conestoga wagon, um, that slowed down the, the stagecoach quite a bit. And that's how the mail got delivered and passengers got delivered. But that being slow made it open for bandits to hold up the stage, just like in old Western movies. That happened up in our mountains up here. And so to this day, because there was definitely the stealing of gold from those stagecoaches, there was the rumors, uh, including a, a dying uh, bandit who said, I put the gold underneath between, you know, where the two creeks come together underneath the tree. That's where the gold got stored. And so a lot of people have gone through the canyons up there looking for gold. And in 1913, along one of the creeks, a $50 gold piece was discovered by someone in the Kenavan family. And so, in fact, there may still be gold in them, their hills. Jonathan. Uh, that's pretty interesting. I would imagine back then there was a bunch of gambling and, and other uh, sordid activities going on in that area. Um, so how did the area at the top of the pass come to be called Painted Cave? Well, let, let's let's talk about some of that gambling and them there stuff up in the hills. Okay. Um, it wasn't, they they actually started a little bit more close to home, like a place to eat. Mm. And what the the man who started the stagecoach at the top of the hill there, he his wife then cooked meals. And for 25 years, if you were going over the pass, you would stop at Nora's and have food. As it got later in that 25 years, another competitor showed up called the Cold Spring Tavern, which also then cooked meals. There was two places where you could get food. Now, Cold Spring Tavern, back during Prohibition and back in those days, they did specialize in booze and gambling. <laughs> so you get far enough out of town, you get that stuff. Right, right. <laughs> so uh, I would imagine that would have been pretty wild back then. Um, how did you know the whole Painted Cave thing get its name, and, and what can you tell us about the Painted Caves? Painted, Painted Cave is, uh, we now know it as a community at the top of the hill there. But back in the day, there's actually a grotto that the Chumash Indians painted inside of, you know, like cave paintings. And in 1907, uh, Johnson Ogram put down metal rods and, and uh, put a padlock on that whole thing mm -hmm. because the, the Indian uh, artifacts had been picked up and carried off and sold to museums and dispersed. But this was a this is a beautiful grotto. It's now a state park. And you can stop alongside the road there. The metal bars he put up are still there. You can still look through the metal bars and see all the paintings on the back of the cave. And it's worth stopping to see. Hmm. Now, because he and his wife owned that land and you know saved it, they went about a quarter of a mile above that and they built a resort because the air is dry up there. And they found that people would want to come. They have abundant water. The springs are really good. And people would start to come for health reasons. So he cut a little tract of about 100 houses up there. It's called the Painted Cave Community and sold off those lots. And uh, Painted Cave, you know, it's been there for about 100 years now. Wow. Uh, pretty interesting. So how did cars start going over the pass? When did that happen? Well, the first car over the pass was right, right around 1900, and that was a steamer. That was not even a, a gas-powered car. Um, the switchbacks made the road a bit difficult. It's been straightened out a couple of times. Um, the, the, the one that we know today, you know, they did that in the 1960s, and then they built the, the bridge that you mentioned, the Cold Spring Bridge over there. That's 700 feet across, and it crosses a canyon 400 feet above the canyon. It's very useful, cuts off a lot of time. Now, getting from here, Santa Barbara, up to Los Olivos, uh, back in the day was an eight-hour ride, and you had to work all day to get up there. Now you can do it in 40 minutes. So, mm -hmm. you know, the, they've, they've, straight, they've taken all of the, the curbs out of it, so to speak. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, I know there's this thing uh, along the way called the Trout Club, but I don't really know what it is. So uh, is, is it still there? And what, what's the history of that? Well, the, the Trout Club is somewhat similar to a Painted Cave. They're a small community. Uh, a group got together and they built some concrete dams in the, in the creek there. And they stocked them with trout. 
they set up about 30 or so lots and the friends and families of these people could go fishing. Of course, it's easy to catch the trout when they're in a pond. <laughs> and they, but they set up cabins to be able to go up into the mountains and get out of town. And that, those, the, the trout club, as we call it, with those lots and the painted cave are the two little, little communities up there on the hill. And they still exist today. And uh, you can still buy houses up there, mm. both of those places. Must have great views from there. Um, now, I know also Jane Fonda had a ranch somewhere on top of the pass. Do you know anything about that? This is the Laurel Springs Ranch. Um, fellow name of Knapp, famous, most people know him as Knapp's Castle, but uh, he, George Knapp, he was a utilities tycoon, built a big lodge up on top of the mountain, and he bought the Laurel Springs Ranch, and he set it up as a place for the nurses from Cottage Hospital to be able to go and have a retreat, get away from their work, relax a little bit. So this has been sort of a health place. And Jane bought it and, you know, doing it as a retreat center. It's sort of along the lines of Esalen, although it's smaller. It's up on the mountain. It's still there. It's still available as a retreat center, although it's not associated with Cottage Hospital anymore. And Jane bought it and helped develop it and then she sold it and she's long gone on but she did she and you can see it as you go along there it's got this really big windmill she put in the big windmill uh, -huh. uh for generating electricity that's up there yeah interesting and uh they've had a bunch of fires there i know like knapp's castle burned down at some point yeah that was i think in 1940 when that burned down and there were subsequent fires in 55 64 and 90 and back in the 40, about half of Painted Cave, including the lodge that was up there, and about half of Painted Cave houses all burned down. So 1940 was the last time that that really burned into the community. Since then, all the other fires, they have their own uh, fire crew up there. It's volunteer, but they're very effective at keeping that community safe. Mm -hmm. So over the years, the road, the San Marcos Pass Road, has constantly been improved. What, what's the status of it today? Well, it, it is a scenic highway. It's not allowed to have, um, you know, it's a corridor, billboards, commercial development is banned in this area. It is naturally beautiful, that's for sure. Going past the Kachuma Lake, you can take that in just a few minutes, you can get up into the valley and up into the wine country, and it's a beautiful road these yeah, days. Yeah, and uh, I'm sure it took a lot of time off the trip to Los Olivos. Yeah, no, no, a eight hours dropped down to 40 minutes. So it's a, it's a breeze to get there. Cell reception is not so perfect. You're reminded, well, you're out in the country. You know, the cell exactly. reception is not perfect. Well, fascinating nice. history. And uh, I appreciate your, your level of detail. And we'll be doing more of these episodes of the different uh, neighborhoods of Santa Barbara. So have our listeners stay tuned. And thanks for listening to Sweet Home Santa Barbara. How can people get hold of you, uh, uh, Scott? E email. Email is the best. Uh, Scott at scottwilliams.com. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Please subscribe to our podcast on your favorite app. If you know someone preparing to sell their home, please tell them about the podcast. Visit scottwilliams.com to contact me and download the two free e-booklets, Is My House Saleable Now? and How Not to Buy a Money Pit. Thank you for listening.